Hello students, this is lesson U5AO3B. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to say I can solve for sides of overlapping right, similar right triangles and the geometric mean. So let's take a look. So this, um, these three proportions were established in the uh, in the previous video, um, and, and I also gave you one other uh, really um, important formula, uh, which I, I hope everyone here um, have internalize a little bit, okay, which is the um, the hypotenuse, the longest side of the triangle here, if uh, broken by this proportion, I have L to M is to N squared, right? So the, the and this is what this was the geometric mean formula. So it's again, L times M is equal to N squared. Let's take a look at this. Pause the video, see if you can figure this out. So hopefully you had some time to think about this. We know that QS is equal to three. We also know that PS is equal to 4. We're looking for RS. How are we supposed to do this? Well, PS is 4, right? So that's our L, 4 times. RS, I don't know what that is. I want to call that M. We can call it whatever we want. We can call it X, okay? And uh, this is going to equal to QS, which is, I mean, which is our N, but we need to square it. So it's going to be 3 squared. So, in other words, M, which is our RS here, is going to equal to 9 fourths. So, you see how simple that was? We could have actually sat there and tried to recreate the uh, similar triangles uh, and the similar proportions. However, if you know that formula, if you know this geometric mean formula, we can just jump directly to it without having to you know, recreate the three similar triangles over and over and over. Let's take a look at another problem here. So again, pause the video to see if you can try this, figure this out on your own. So hopefully you had some time to think about this. And again, I'm going to call this side here L and this side here M, and I'm going to call this side here N. So therefore, I'm looking at AD is equal to 9, that's our L, so that's 9, times DC, that's our M, which is 4, is equal to BD, which is what we're looking for, which I don't know. So I'm going to call that n. So wait a minute. n squared is equal to 9 times 4. n squared is equal to 36. What's n equal to? Well, yeah, that's 6, because square root of 36. So what's bd? bd is 6. Look how simple that was. Let's take a look at another problem. So I know that A, um, and again, pause the video to see if you can try this out on your own. I'm going to call this ABL, and BC, I'm going to call that M. I'm going to call BDN. This time we're looking for AD, and we're looking for DC, and we're looking for BC, which is fine, okay? So I, I know that I have AC is equal to 10, BD is equal to 4, uh, and that's all the information that you're given, okay? So again, AC is equal to 10 and uh, BD is equal to 4. So I know that N, so again, L times M is equal to N squared, right? So I know that, B, I know that BD is equal to 4, so that's my N, so that's 16 right here, right? So I'll write in 4. 4 squared. Okay, uh, I don't know what either L or M is equal to, but I do know that AC is equal to 10, so that's L plus M, isn't that right? So L plus M is equal to 10. I don't know what either one of them are. That's a problem. So what I can do, okay, is because we're, we're clever individuals, okay, humans are innate problem solvers. We can solve problems. What we can do is we can express one variable in terms of another. So wait, if L is equal to if L plus M is equal to 10, can I say then L is equal to 10 minus M? Right? So if that's the case, then I can say L times M is really 10 minus M times M. So if I do this, right, 
this turns into, wait a minute, this is 10m minus m squared is equal to 16. And wait, isn't this a quadratic equation? If I bring everything over to one side, let's say I bring everything over to the right-hand side, I'll end up with 0 is equal to m squared minus 10m plus 16. How do I solve something like this? I need to now think of two numbers that multiplies to 16 but adds to negative 10. What on earth gives me that kind of combination? Oh yeah, that's right. It's m minus 8 times m minus 2 equal to 0. So what will m equal to? m will equal to either 2 or 8. So if m is equal to either 2 or 8, that means l will equal to either 8 or 2. So it really doesn't matter. So um, we're, I'm just going to pick 1. So let's say if m is equal to 2, and l, then therefore l will equal to 8. Why am I saying it doesn't matter? Because it's just a matter of perspective. We can either look at the triangle oriented like so, okay, where this is going to be uh, 2 and this is going to be 8 versus the triangle oriented like the one from above where we have this is 8 versus 2. Can't you see, can you guys see that this is actually the same triangle, right? So it really doesn't matter. So I know, so I'm just going to say that m is equal to 2 and l is equal to 8. So with that understanding, okay, if l is equal to 8 and m is equal to 2, with that understanding, now I can figure out what all the other things are. So let's say if um, if AB here was 8, okay, then that means BD here is, oh, and BD is equal to 4, right? And I'm looking for AD. Well, isn't AD going to be the square root of, well, I need to apply the Pythagorean theorem, right? So I have 8 squared plus 4 squared is equal to AD squared. So if I add these up, I end up with 64 plus 16 is equal to AD squared. Oh, wait a minute. AD squared is equal to 80, or AD is equal to square root of 80. And last I check, 16 divides evenly into 80, right? That's uh, 16 times 5. So that means AD will equal to 4 square root of 5. And then similarly, I can solve for what DC is. So if I have DC, so I can have 2 squared plus 4 squared is equal to DC squared. So I'm going to have 4 plus 16 is equal to DC squared. DC squared is equal to 20. Or in other words, DC is equal to 2 square root of 5. And again, just just based on the orientation of what M or L, you know, how, how um, whichever one we choose, we pick to be 2 or 8, okay, then these dimensions are just going to be in reverse. Okay, 